<laughs> the telephone. It needs no introduction. It's very much a staple of every household worldwide nowadays. The first global communications hub really to reach us all was the good old phone. It's a wonderfully evocative image, isn't it? The old massive handset and the rotary dial. A classic, frankly. This particular example here, a British Standard, 1981. Not bad. And as somebody who's fascinated by all things old, of course I've got to have an old phone. It's just how it got to be, hasn't it? It's amazing, really, if you think about it, in the world that we have today, with the advent of the internet and all of that, we still have our good old phones, like my smartphone. I can do so much on this thing. I can call up my friends, I can ring up people from across the world, or just receive so many spam calls, I don't know what to do with it. But of course we still have our landlines, even to this day. This is the landline from my house. Wireless, it's battery powered. I can do an awful lot of things. It's got voicemail on here. You tell what number it is. And the whole handset is smaller than the handset of this old phone. Marvellous, isn't it? How much time has changed? But of course, this is not what phones used to look like. Well, it is. Now, I barely remember these phones. I remember seeing one once plugged into a house, and that was a little old lady's house. But these have pretty much been wiped out since before I was born. But there are certain phones that were completely out of existence before living memory, pretty much. I have one of these phones. That phone is not it. This phone is. Wah, it's heavy. Oh, yes. I have a wall mounted candlestick type telephone. But it isn't just any wall mounted candlestick telephone, as if that thing could just be any old. This one's got some particular historic value. As far as I'm aware, it's unique. Uh, the type of phone still exists, it's made in America. But not like this. This phone was pulled out of a telephone exchange somewhere in Manchester. I sadly don't know where. And I know exactly when it was because it was the same date that they opened the Manchester Underground Telephone Exchange, which was built underground to protect from the Cold War. That's when this phone was removed. My neighbour gave me this because she knew I would look after it, which I have done. And it was a family friend that used to work for BT, British Tele um, Communications. Well, telephones. Good old BT, he used to work for them, and he saved this from the skip. And he was the only one he did save. These were the phones that were used around the telephone exchange for internal phone calls. And over the years, it's had a number of modifications. It never had this dial, this was put in in the 1930s. And if I open it up, it just hinges open. All of the old gubbins, the old generator, everything, has been ripped out and replaced with modern stuff. And that was done in the late 40s, early 50s. Which means something quite interesting. You see, this is a historic, well, historic uh, phone. It does belong in a museum, but what's the point of having it behind a piece of glass when nobody can use it? This phone has the exact same gubbins that this phone does. In fact, if you open them up, the same parts are in both. The headset, you know, you've got the mouthpiece here and you've got the wonderful evocative earpiece over here. Hello. The hanging up is the same as that there. Even the dial is the same. I can still dial up on this, although it needs a bit of encouragement sadly. And on this, same system. Exactly the same system. Because it never changed. Until the digital age, this is how phones were. They used the exact same system. And these phones still work today. Which is why I'm going to put this on the table, because it is actually very heavy. I plan to use the gubbins from this phone. In this phone. Okay, not quite the same. I plan to use this phone to repair this phone and get this phone working on a modern phone line so it can be used today. And there's a heck of a lot of work to do. But there is one rule, and there's a, this is a very important rule. If any of the electronics in this phone do not work, and I can't get them working 
without replacing parts, I won't do it. I have a very safe belief on conservation over restoration. This is something that is unique. There are none of these surviving from the Manchester telephone exchanges. Nothing like this. That, the same model of phone survives, but not in its modified state like this. Not with the keyhole, or the dial, or the modern electrics. And I won't replace any of the modern electrics in this. It's been over 60 years since this phone made a phone call, but hopefully by the end of this, it'll either make a phone call, or it'll be in nice enough condition to look at. And frankly, that's the best thing to do, rather than have it sat away where nobody can see it. So, there's a couple of jobs to do. I'm going to get to them. It's going to be good. Right, so it's uh, another day actually since I last recorded that. So I've got the phone down here. Now it's time for what you would consider an educated guess. There is no wiring diagrams here. The only wiring diagram present on this phone is the one from when it was built and that does not match at all. You know, that has the generator and everything and none of this modern gubbins. So the thing I was saying with the old phone, and why this phone is the same, it is literally the same. You've got this, which equates to basically the circuit board, and you've got the dial, you've got the bell, you've got the hanging up connector there, and, you know, you've got everything here. Here's the mouthpiece. All of the parts are the same. This phone was modernised, and they ripped out all the old gubbins. The only difference here is the technology in this phone is 30, 40 years older than the one in that phone. However... 1920s, 1930s phones modernised all the time, and even though this phone is much older, the tech in it is 1940s. So, let's call it a 1940s phone in principle. So, these are the four connections. Now, there's a number of wires that go to these, which is why I'm calling it an educated guess. The only wild card is this. Um, now, that is some sort of key uh, to disconnect the phone by the looks of it, and I don't have the key for it. So... Worst, case, worst comes to the worst, I will just bypass it, uh, but hopefully when it was turned off the switch was turned to on, so that doesn't really matter. The colours are what I'm kind of going off the guess. There are four connections, now there's 16 different possible combinations, however I'm going off the colour. Now on the other phone we've got white, red, green and blue on the, uh, the cable. On this we've got blue, green orange and white. And there's a couple of others um, as are present on the other phone. So, but it only links to four connections. But that orange cable, when you chase it back, actually connects to a red cable. Uh, it just goes through this. So, fingers crossed, all I have to do is plug in the modern wire to the old phone and hopefully I can make a phone call. However, I won't be able to make a phone call with this phone, I'll only be able to receive it. The problem being is this, if I... I don't think I've showed this. The rotary dial is jammed. Uh, now the reason for this is simply it's gummed up. Uh, the way that these work is they've got a centrifugal uh, governor, and the centrifugal governor uh, controls how fast it goes, and that's just sticking, basically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out and oil it, but I will do that after... I can test whether it can receive a phone call. And if it doesn't work, oh well. So let's have a crack at this. Right, here comes the guesswork. Now this is the donor cable. Uh, now I think I explained earlier, but I'll say it again, just for the sake of repeating myself. The old phone, I will replace this cable if it works. But the old phone, um, I got that specifically so, if something isn't working in here, I can use it to bug test. I have all summer. Before I move out to do this. Right, now, I've never done anything like this before. So, I'm being careful. Now that's the white. Now, that connects to the white cable on this. I won't over tighten them. The red is next. Now, this is just guesswork. It couldn't. It, it might just never work. It might just explode. Frankly, who knows? There we go. Plug that one in. Next is the green. How's it going? It's going alright. My dad's helping me out. This is dad's best screwdriver, frankly. This one is... 
There we go. <laughs> green and then blue. So let's plug in the green. Oh, I lost the piece of paper. Oh no, it just moved up. Now I'm no phone engineer. I'm really not. And I never worked on old phones. This is something new. But it's old and I like it. So, yeah. So, this will not... I was going to explain this. I'm actually having to disconnect the internet to try and get this to work. The reason being is that this will not actually work with broadband. There we go. It won't work with broadband and the reason being is the system, phone system was updated a number of years ago and old phones don't like working with it. There's a conversion kit, but I've not got that. It will still work, but it won't be able to use modern phones. So I'm just going to have to move this guy back, because I actually have to climb in to plug this guy in. Alright. Apologies for this. Why is my house so awkward? That is the question. Right, that's the internet now off. And now... Old phone is live! It's not done anything. Nothing's happened. Wasn't expecting anything to happen, that's why. Right, now let's just move the phone. Now, that's my phone, I was wondering where it was, it's in my pocket. If this works, I'll be amazed, frankly. I, I doubt this will work. It's like trying to start a car that's been in the garage for years. Let's try it. Dialing home. Nothing. Dead. That's rather disappointing, isn't it? Well, I'll be honest, I expected that. <laughs> oh dear. Right. That's a pain. Oh dear. Well, give me a minute and I'll set something up anyway. Okay, so that was very disappointing. Oh dear. Uh, my internet is still dead. So, uh, just to prove a point on how old phones work. I'm pretty sure you all know this, but I need some soft power. I'm going to bring the home phone. Hello. <laughs> Put this on speaker. Hi. There you go. Yep. And this old phone works, although the quality is less than could be desired. I'll top that. And then, of course. Uh, and also, just for the sake of doing it, yep, hung myself up. I'm going to dial my number. But you're not going to see that. I'm only going to dial the first two numbers on camera. And that is as follows. And would you have that? Just as if magic. Hello. And there it is again. Speaking on the old phone. Huh. I think that's enough of that. So that's, in theory, the old phone. I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure out the old, old phone. But that, at least you got to see something working. I knew this worked anyway, but uh, I thought you might as well uh, see something. So, join you in the next part when, hopefully, I'll have something to say. See you guys then.